Hey, guess what time it is, class? It's science time. Now, take out your notes, and let's get learning. Class, I hope all of you are doing well. So today, we're going to start getting into concentrations of solutions. And this is something that uh, whenever a lot of sub substances are being produced here, many times they're dissolved in some sort of solvent. Most often, it's water. Sometimes it can be other things as well. So for example, whenever I'm making some of the solutions for some of the labs here, I have to take a certain amount of material, put it into water, and uh, dissolve it here. And there's several different ways of expressing what is the concentration. In other words, how much material is dissolved in that amount of liquid. So a few terms I want you to be familiar with. Um, they are solute, solvent, and solution. The solute is a substance that's being dissolved. The solvent is the substance which is doing the dissolving, and most often it's going to be water. And for all sense of uh, purposes here, most often we're just going to be assuming that's going to be a water. Now, sometimes it could be in other things here. Some things will not dissolve in water. Sometimes they might have to be dissolved in, say, like a rubbing alcohol or acetone, or there's a bunch of other types of su uh, liquid substances that solutions might be dissolved into. But vast majority of the time, it's water. And for what you're going to be dealing with here, we're just going to be assuming it's water. And then a solution is a mixture of both the solvent and the solute. So one way that I used to remember this here, because I used to always get confused between solute and solvent, is that think of a burial at sea. Someone dies on a ship, and so you end up taking the body, and um, they drop, would drop it over the edge of the ship ship here and everyone would salute okay it's spelled differently but that's just a, a, a silly little thing that I used to remember here is you're putting something into the water and everyone salutes okay water is most often referred to as a universal solvent because it's able to dissolve most anything and in some cases here too if you have the pressure high enough here it can even start dissolving or even cutting into other materials but if you combine these two things together, you have what's called a solution. So for example, if you're dissolving um, salt into water, the salt will be your solute, the water will be your solvent, and your salt and water is a salt solution. So it's because it's made up of both water and the, um, the substance that's been dissolved into the water. So there's no chemical reaction which is taking place between the two of them here. It's just that basically water is kind of carrying the, the salt or the same thing. Like if you have sugar, sugar would be your solute. If you dissolve into water, water would be the solvent. And then you would have a sugar solution. So hopefully that makes sense. So again, my amazing graphics here. So this is a salt cube and I have a container of water. So water is my solvent, my solute is my sodium chloride, and if all this dissolves, I would then have the whole thing would be a salt solution. Now the way that you go about expressing the concentration is basically you're looking at uh, how many particles or how much substance is dissolved into that uh, material, or into that solvent. So a concentration is a measurement of the amount of solute that's dissolved in a given quantity of solvent. So the number of particles in a, in a given volume of solvent. Now there are several different ways of expressing it. And before I get into that here, let me just try to equate it to this here. So it's kind of picture if I have, oh, come on now. Let's say I have a container like this. Okay. And then I have another container that's bigger. Okay. And I've, let's say these little dots here, right here represent the uh, particles here. So right now, I have like these four particles in a given amount of solution. Now, if I were to put four particles in something like this, a bigger container, this would have a higher concentration because you're looking at how many particles in a given amount of space. So this would have a high concentration. So I'm going to put a big C here, and this will have a lower concentration. This will be a little C over here. In other words, four 
each one of these particles is how much like how much liquid is around it okay now I can make this have a higher concentration and the way I would have to do that here is I would have to add more particles within this and eventually the more I would add here I'm increasing my amount of concentration if I add a little bit more to this I'm going to be increasing my concentration even more so and add a little bit more to it and my concentration will go up even bigger okay so it has to look at how many particles are there in a given amount of solvents or basically you know within a given amount of space so the more particles you have within a certain amount of space here the more con concentrated it is now one way of expressing this is in a unit called parts per hundred or sometimes called pph so it's a measurement indicating how many particles are present out of 100. now sometimes when you're dealing with a solution it's like how many centigrams per liter is can sometimes be expressed as a unit of PPH. So to give you an example of that is that let's pretend this is a beaker of water and there are 100 particles within here. And I actually made 100 particles within this. Four of those particles are sodium ions. So therefore, this is what's, what's referred to as 4 PPH. So out of a total 100 particles, four of these are sodium ions so this is referred to as being come on now it's like my pen ran out of color yeah there we go I might must be on the edge here for pph b p h okay that means I have a hundred particles there are four particles of sodium ions Now, typically, PPH is not as common. Uh, one that's a little bit more common here is parts per million, or sometimes uh, designated as being PPM. So it's a measurement indicating how many particles are present out of one million. Now, I'm not going to draw out a million, but uh, basically, if you're measuring something in a unit of milligrams per liter, a lot of times you're measuring in the units of uh, PPM if you're dealing with water. And also, even one, um, typically with my university students here, we tend to have some measurements where they measure in parts per billion and or PPB. So it's a measurement indicating how many particles are present out of one billion particles. So in other words, if I count out a billion uh, particles that's in a container that's been dissolved in water here, um, and so out of the billion, how many of those are of that substance that, that's been dissolved into the water? And um, I'm not sure if I showed it to you here, but there is a device called a micropipetter. It's a mechanical micropipette, which can deliver uh, solutions in these concentrations here in, mil in micrograms per liter or uh, parts per billion. And there's, there's even parts per trillion, which is PPT, not to be confused with the abbreviation for precipitate, but if you measure things out of a trillion particles. Now, one place you may have seen it, or some of you may have not seen it here, but if you have, if your family has city water, where you have to pay for the water, in other words, you don't have a well water, but you are getting water from the from the city. A few times a year, I'm sure it's either two or four times a year, in the water bill, there is a water quality test that they have to uh, show to all the customers. And um, if you ever ask your parents about it, they might be able to tell you a little bit about it. Uh, or if it ever comes around sometime in the near future, they might be able to show you the results of it here. But... Um, a lot of times when you're looking at it, it'll give you the indication like how much iron is in the water or how much bacteria is in the water. And a lot of times they're measuring in units of parts per million and parts per billion. And even in some cases, maybe in parts per trillion. And whenever you hear of cases where people have like a water boiling, notice here, it's because the concentration of one of those substances got a little bit too high. And so it's no longer safe for consumption and so they tell people don't drink the water or you may have to boil the water typically if it's like bacteria the bacteria levels got a little bit too high they'll tell people to boil the water before they start using it so but a lot of times they will measure those and use the parts per million or parts per billion uh, typically you'll see parts per hundred when you're dealing with uh, air particles uh, if, for example like how many particulates um, even like pollen or some sort of a poisonous gas 
if, if it's in the units of parts per hundred, um, a lot of times that's typically more for gases and parts per million, parts per billion are typically used for solutions that are dissolved in a liquid. Now, we're not going to really be doing anything with the, those units here, but the one that you sometimes will see is measuring concentration in percent by mass. And again, whenever you see the word percent, per means by, cent means by 100. Okay, so it's, everything is based out of 100. So it's a solute in solution and the number of grams of solute dissolved in 100 grams of solution. So in other words, if you were to have 100 grams of that solution, how much of it will be of that substance that you're looking at? So the percent by mass is basically the mass of your solute over the mass of the solute plus the mass of the solvent. And in other words, if you remember, a solute plus a solvent is a solution. Or another way of expressing this is that a percent is equal to the part all over the whole thing. And then to make it out of 100, you multiply it by 100. Okay, so the part is your solute, that's the substance which is being dissolved, and the whole thing is the entire solution, which is your solute and your solvent. And then to base it out of 100 here, um, or to make it into a percentage here, you multiply it by 100. In other words, if you were to have 100 grams of, the, of that material, it's how many grams of it would actually be of that substance that you're looking at, in other words, that part that you're looking at. Now, some places where you might have seen this is, for example, if you're looking at a container of rubbing alcohol. For example, if this is a 70% solution, 70% um, tends to be the most common one. Sometimes you might see like 90% um, isopropyl alcohol. That means if you were to measure out 100 grams of isopropyl alcohol, 70 grams of it is actually rubbing alcohol, 30 grams of it is water. Or if you look at hydrogen peroxide, this is a 3% solution. That means out of that bottle, if you measured out 100 grams of hydrogen peroxide, it's only 3 grams of it is hydrogen peroxide. 97 grams of it is water. Now, that might give you a little indication just how strong hydrogen peroxide actually is. Uh, if you start getting into uh, 30%, it will, start, it will start burning your skin. And if you get even to higher percentages here, if you start getting around to like 90%, it's actually it can become so unstable here, it can cause things to start bursting into flames. Uh, it is so highly reactive. So it's actually a very dangerous toxic material, but what we use for cuts is a very highly diluted solution of it. Or if you look in this case right here, hopefully you'll never have to see one of these. But if you look at it like an IV bag, and if you look over here, it's a 0.9% saline solution. Saline is salt. And as a matter of fact, it even says right here, sodium chloride. That means if you measure out 100 grams of this, 0.9 grams of it is sodium chloride. The 99.1 grams of it is water. And you don't want it too, too much higher than that, or even too much lower than that. If you have it too high, you actually will start dehydrating or start pulling the solution. And if you've taken biology, you may have remembered here with like osmosis, where if the concentration is either too high or too low, it will cause the cells to either to swell up or shrivel up. So this is basically the concentration of salt within your body, and they're just trying to match that concentration. So I'll give you an example here. If I were to take 20 grams of sodium chloride and I dissolved and measure out 180 grams of water, I would have a 10% sodium chloride solution. So to show you the work for that, so again, the percent by mass, the mass of the solute, that's my salt. The mass of the solute, again, that's your salt, and the mass of the solvent, that's the water. So if I have the mass of the solute is 20 grams, and then I have 20 grams of sodium chloride and 180 grams of water, this right here, I would have 200 grams of solution. In other words, my, that's my salt water. But 20 grams of it is sodium chloride. So 20 divided by 200 times 100, that's a 10% sodium chloride solution. That means if I were to measure out 100 grams of it, 10 grams of it will be sodium chloride. And again, if you kind of look back at this, if I were to basically cut this in half, 
and poured, you know, if all the sodium chloride were to dissolve here, and I cut this in half, um, I would have 100 grams over here, I would have 100 grams over here, and I would have 10 grams of sodium chloride, and then 10 grams of sodium chloride. So hopefully that makes sense. So let's do some examples, and I'm going to show you this process of going through that, and then later on there will be a Moodle assignment where you're going to be doing the same thing. So number one, determine the percent by mass of a solution prepared by dissolving 32.5 grams of glucose and 155 grams of water. So glucose is a type of sugar. So I want to know what is the percentage of glucose in water. Now before we get started with uh, number one, one thing I want to go over is with a percentage. And whenever you see a percentage, a percentage is basically part over the whole thing. And because this is a percent, you know, which means by 100, that's the reason why we multiply this by 100. So in this situation, when we're dealing with the uh, percent composition, the part is your solute. The whole thing is the solution. And the solution is actually the, the solute plus the solvent. So when you're looking at this, the solute is the stuff which is being dissolved, the solvent is the stuff which is doing the dissolving, for most of the stuff that you're going to be dealing with that is going to be water. So you're, again, you're just looking part over the whole thing. So the part is the stuff which is being dissolved, the whole thing is the entire solution which is made up of your solute and your solvent. So keep that in mind. So this is basically the equation here, but with the whole, that's your solute and your solvent. All right, so let's take a look at the first one. So let me rewrite this equation again, but using the terms, if I can spell correctly, you have the solute over the solute plus the solvent times 100. All right, so in the first problem, we have uh, 32.5 grams of glucose, and we're trying to find out what is the percentage if it's dissolved in 155 grams of water. All right, so the glucose is basically a form of sugar, and that is your solute, and then over the whole thing, which is going to be your sugar in your water. So let's go ahead and just plug in the numbers. So we have 32.5 grams of glucose. All over. 32.5 grams of glucose plus the 155 grams of water. times 100 in order to turn that into a percentage. Now whatever you do, do not make the mistake of thinking that well I have 32.5 and 32.5 so these two can't cancel each other out. These, your denominator needs to be added together first. So you have to take 32.5 over the sum of the 32.5 plus 155. So if you take 32.5 divided by, and one thing I would recommend doing is open up a set of parentheses, 32.5 plus 155, close parentheses, then times 100, you should get about 17.33% glucose. And that is the answer for the part. So what that means is that if you were to take this solution of glucose and water and you measure it out or pour it out 100 grams of glucose, you would have 17.33 grams of glucose and 100 grams of solution. So let's move on to the next one. Number two, what is the percent by mass of a solution prepared by dissolving 4 grams of acetic acid and 35 grams of water? So for this one, it's kind of along the same lines, it is that we have 4 grams of acetic acid and 35 grams of water. So it, when in doubt, just assume the, the water is going to be your solvent. 
And then if it's something other than water, that's going to be your solute. So we have four grams of acetic acid. It's one of your pyatomic ions. It's hydrogen acetate all over four grams of acetic acid. plus 35 grams of water. Times 100. So again, you're going to take four, divide it by, and what I would recommend doing is open up a set of parentheses. And you're going to have four grams plus 35 grams, which comes out to be 39, and then times 100. And you would get about 10.256% acetic acid. And again, what that would mean is that if you were to pour out 100 grams of this solution, you would have 10.256 grams of acetic acid would be contained, would be contained within that. Number three. A solution of sodium chloride is prepared by dissolving 5 grams of salt in 550 grams of water. What is the concentration of this solution given as a percent by mass? Now for this particular one here, we're going to do this in three different ways here. We're going to use these three different ways as a comparison. So let's go ahead and work this one out. All right, number three. So this time we have 5 grams of salt and 550 grams of water. We're looking for what is the uh, percent by mass. So again, salt is your solute. So you have 5 grams of NaCl all over 5 grams of NaCl plus 550 grams of water times 100. So you're going to take 5 divided by, basically it's 555, times 100. And what you end up getting is 0.9%. And if you look at it, you'll see you get a bunch of other numbers. Basically, it kind of keeps repeating 009009 on here. So, um, so I'm going to take it out to four places past the decimal point. And that's percent of sodium chloride solution. And again, what that would mean is that if I were to pour out 100 grams of this salt water solution, out of every 100 grams of that solution, I would get about 0.9 grams of sodium chloride. Now, the next two problems are actually similar to this one. And we're going to use this one as a means of carrying a work. Now, also keep in mind, too, is that we rounded this number over here. So the next problem is that I'm going to take this a little bit further here. Number four. How many grams of sodium chloride were dissolved to make a 0.9% solution in 550 grams of water? Now you might already know the answer, but we're going to go through here just to use it as a means of checking your work. So for number four, how many grams of sodium chloride were dissolved in to make 0.9% solution in 550 grams of water? Well, if you look at this, and it's like, oh, well, you know, if we have 550 grams of water and we have a 0.9% solution, how many grams of sodium chloride should we have? And so from this, we should, if we did it correctly, you should end up with 5 grams. Now, one thing that's going to be a little bit off is because this is not exactly 0.9%. And in the problem, it is 0 0.9. So the answer we get here should be something close to 5 grams. It won't be exact, but it should be pretty close to it. So let's go ahead and work this one out. Because a lot of times, whenever you're working this stuff out, you're not always just trying to find out what a percentage. You may want to have a certain percentage, and you need to know how do you go about getting that percentage. So most often, this is the process that you would have to go through in order to find out yeah, you know, for example, like um, the saline solution. 
it needs to be a very specific type of percentage of salt because if it's too high or too low, it can injure the patient. So if you're making a salt water solution or a saline solution, you need to know how much salt within a given amount of volume or given amount of mass of water to give you that percentage. So let's go and work this one out. So this time we don't know how many grams of salt we have. So we're going to symbolize that as letter X. And we have X number of grams of salt, but it's dissolved in 550 grams of water. I'm just going to put down 550. I'm not going to put down the water here. Times 100 is equal to, we have a 0.9% solution. Okay. So we need to solve for X. X being the grams of salt. So, because we have percentage, we need to get rid of that percent. The way we do that is you divide out the 100. So this will cancel out. So you end up with X all over X plus 550 grams is equal to, if you take 0.9 divide by 100, you're going to end up with 0 0.009. Nine. The percent will be gone. All right, now we have x in numerator, x in denominator. This is all together here. So let's get rid of this denominator. We need to bring this up to the top. So the way you do that, use your cross multiply. Basically, you know, you flip it up over here. So you're going to multiply both sides by x plus 550. Or basically, you're just going when you flip sides, you want to switch what side it's on. So when you do that, you end up with x is equal to 0 0.009 times x plus 550 grams. All right. Now you should be able to recognize what you do next here. We have 0 0.009 times x plus 550. So we, now we need to distribute the 0 0.009 to everything inside the parentheses. Now keep in mind this is technically 1x. So therefore x is equal to 0 0.009 times x plus, and if you take 0 0.009 times 550, you end up getting 4.95 grams. Okay, now next thing, we need to get the x's onto the same side. So we have an x over here, we have x over here, we have 4.95 grams over here. So I'm going to move this x over towards the left hand side. So when you're doing that, you need to subtract both sides by 0 0.009x on both sides. these two will cancel out. Because this is being added to it, I would, in order to get rid of it, I need to subtract it out. So what you end up with is x minus 0.009x is equal to 4.95 grams. All right now, if you look at this, we have an x and we have x here. Technically, this is 1x. So 1 minus 0 0.009, and that comes out to be 0.991x is equal to 4.95 grams. All right, we're almost there. So now, since we have 0.991x, we want x by itself. We need to divide both sides by 0.991. So over here, it will cancel out. We take 4.95, divide by 0.991. We end up with x is equal to 4.995 grams. And this will be the amount of sodium chloride that's contained within it. So if you look at the answer, is that Initially, you know, one way of checking the work here is to see how close is it to the 5 grams. 
So we're off just by a little bit. And again, part of the reason why is initially when we did this, we got point, uh, point 0.9009, but in the problem, we're dealing with point 0.9. So because of that small discrepancy here, that's what's allowing for the small discrepancy between these two. Now let me move it up so you can see it. So that's what's allowing for the discrepancy between these two values here. So if I were to use something a little bit closer to this number here, this number would have been closer to 5 grams. So hopefully that makes sense. Let's try the next one. Number 5. How many grams of water is needed to dissolve 5 grams of sodium chloride to make a 0.9% sodium chloride solution? All right, on number 5, it's basically similar to the, the previous one, or actually the previous two is that we're now solving for how much water, how much uh, solvent is needed in order to dissolve it. So in this problem, we have five grams of sodium chloride. And we're trying to find out how much water is needed to give you a 0.9% solution. And again, if you look at the, the previous work, if you look at number three, so we're now saying, okay, if you have five grams of sodium chloride, what would it take to make a 0.9% sodium chloride solution? So if we do this correctly, we should end up with the answer very close to 550. And again, because when we actually did this, we got almost 0.9, a little over than 0.9. We're going to have a slight discrepancy with this, but we should get a number very close to 550 grams. All right, so in this situation, we have 5 grams. We need this percentage of concentration. How much water is needed for that to happen? All right, so technically, all this is combined here. So 5 grams plus X. So that's your solute, and this is your solvent. We don't know how much solvent we have. So the first step, because we have a percentage, we need to get rid of that percent. So we need to divide both sides by 100. So we end up with 5 grams of the sodium chloride all over 5 grams of the sodium chloride plus X is equal to 0 0.009. Now, similar to the, the last one, we have your unknown, it currently is in a denominator. We need to bring this up to the top. So the way we're gonna do this here is by cross multiplying, basically multiplying both sides by five grams plus X on the both sides. So we bring it up, it's gonna come up to the top on the other side of it. So you're gonna have five grams of sodium chloride. Oops, I guess what else here? I messed up on that part. So you have five grams is equal to 0 0.009 times five grams. I'm not gonna bother putting on the sodium chloride here. Five grams plus X. Okay, ignore this part here. I messed up on that part. All right, so now we're going to have to do to distribute. So you have 0 0.009 times 5, and also you need to distribute the 0 0.009 to x. And technically, this is 1x. So 5 grams is equal to 0 0.009 times 5 is 0 0.045 grams. And then 0 0.009 times x is 0 0.009 x. Now, check your units. We have grams, we have grams, we have x. We need the same signs on the same side. So we have grams and grams. I need to move this grams over to the other side. Now, because this is being added to it, I need to subtract this out. So minus 0 0.045 grams on both sides. These two cancel out. So you end up with 5 grams minus 0 0.045 grams 
is equal to 0.009x. All right, now we have 5 grams minus 0 0.045, so you need to subtract these two values. So you end up with 4.955 grams is equal to 0.009x. All right, now almost there. The only thing we have to do is get x by itself. So we need to divide both sides by 0 0.009. So these two we cancel out, but then 4.95 divided by 0 0.009, and we end up doing that, and we end up getting where x is equal to 550.56 grams, and that is the amount of water that is needed to make that solution. So what we just figured out is that if you have 5 grams of sodium chloride and you need to make a 0.9% solution, it's going to take 550.56 grams of water. And again, as a means of checking the work, from what we did with number 3, we have 5 grams of sodium chloride and then divided by the mass of the solution here, for, say 5 grams of sodium chloride, 550 grams of water, to make a 0 0.9009 repeating um, value to it. So the fact that we got you know, just a little over 550 grams as compared to this is because here we got 0 0.9009 as opposed to the 0.9% solution. So that small discrepancy between the parentheses is what accounted for the variation within the uh, the amount of water that's needed. All right, so hopefully you understand that. If you have any questions on that, let me know.